All right. <laughs> so our final finalist for the Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge 2017 is Lalitia from Mason, Ohio. <laughs> All right, dear. There you go. Thank you. Have fun. Okay. My grandfather used to tell me that when he was younger, he and his siblings would study around a dangerous kerosene lamp. Now, this was in 1940, but for over 2.5 billion people across the globe, light poverty, which is having little to no access to energy, remains a reality. And those who do have access to energy are relying heavily on conventional energy sources, resulting in increased pollution. The current renewable energy sources are not up to par either. Focusing on hydropower, turbines such as the impulse and reaction have to have a high head and high flow to generate power, have negative environmental impact, have long-term ROIs, and can lead to human displacement for the dam construction. So my problem was the lack of access to energy, and my preliminary solution was to have a low-flow water turbine with activated piezos. I then designed some design success criteria as well. So I still want to take you through my scientific journey. I started off by brainstorming nine different problems and put them on a heat map based on interest and complexity level. I selected the top four using this method. I then brainstormed solutions for these problems and using the same method as before, selected the low flow water turbine with activated piezo. So this is LE 1.0, a low flow water turbine with activated piezos on the blades to generate energy. But as I designed this, I found some problems, such as piezo setup, insulation, and flow control. I knew I would need a flow channel to control my flow and test my device, but the major setback was that nearby universities did not have a flow channel that I could use. So it's back to the design board. My first idea was to use a plastic container and a garden manifold as my flow channel. But then I thought, what if I could put all my components into this device for ease of portability and ease of use? To make my device suitable for multiple environments, I then added solar panels. This is my flow channel consisting of the flow container and the manifold. My flow diversion assembly consisted of the manifold and the hoses. I knew that due to the law of conservation of mass, the amount of flow leaving the manifold would be the same amount impacting the turbine, excluding the losses on the sides. My flow ranged from 2.1 gallons per minute to 6 gallons per minute. Based on previous research, I then moved on to turbine designing. I designed four different turbines, but only three could be printed, as the fourth one is unstable structurally. Using a tackle meter, I then decided to test my turbines based on RPM. Turbines had the highest RPM, so it was selected. Tur then my turbine assembly was consisted of ball bearings and gears to keep my device in place. I had a small gap at the bottom for wildlife movement. I used Lego pieces for transmission. The direct transmission and belt transmission did not work, but the gear ratio of 1 to 4.5 did, as it increased my energy output. My electricity generation was very consistent with a low standard deviation, ranging from 5.1 volts to 11.2 volts. My current range from 1.23 milliamps to 8.4 milliamps. My piezos were tested based on the polyvinyl thin film, with and without mass, and it was based on my previous trifenerate project readings. I selected two kinds of piezos for a variety of vibrations. In my solar panel testing, I tested multiple orientations, such as the flat, triangle, pyramid, and dome. The dome was selected as I was able to provide energy even as the sun moved throughout the entire day. My solar panels were tested in both cloudy and sunny skies, with very low variability, except in the cloudy skies, which had more variability due to the variability in the clouds. My voltage ranged from 18.3 volts to 41.1 volts. My current ranged from 118 milliamps to 216 milliamps. This is my final prototype, Ellie. It once again was tested in sunny and cloudy skies, and the voltage ranged from 33.8 volts to 51.8 volts, and the current ranged from 118 milliamps to 216 milliamps. The power ranged from 5 watts to 11 watts. I concluded that I had created a device that met my design success criteria. In my final assembly, I used the insulating epoxy and insulating tape for insulation, as water and electricity do not go well together. I then used duct tape and adhesive for structural support. So this innovation is really good, but it's applying it that's going to make it better. I did a case study on the Mississippi and Arkansas River, both of which had a variety of flows and a peak sun hour of at least four hours. My device could be easily implemented there. I also did a case study on Puerto Rico due to the recent calamity there. Puerto Rico has significant water flow and has high sun hours throughout the entire year. I ha my device could bring affordable and resilient energy to Puerto Rico. It could also be implemented into the already existing grid in Puerto Rico or have its own nanogrid for emergency energy as well. 
My next step would be to make my device more cost effective and more efficient. I'd also like to create Nano Ellie, a device to be placed in gray water. Ellie, my current device, of which it is already on its way to Puerto Rico to help stop the crisis there. Mega Ellie, a device for storm brands, and to combine my device Trafenerate, which generates energy from vehicular motion, with Ellie to generate energy. Overall, I hope that you too will join me on this journey of changing the world, simply one watt at a time. I would like to thank my family and mentor for always supporting me, and Discover Education and 3M for giving me this once in a lifetime opportunity. I'd also like to thank all of the teams, Ms. Betsy, Ms. London, Ms. Ashley, who've helped me so much throughout this process. Your energy and enthusiasm are contagious. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sharing that with us. Um, tell us along the way, we know that you had some obstacles and challenges. You alluded to some of those um, mm -hmm. in some of your comments. What was the most significant challenge that you faced and how did you work to overcome it? Uh, I think the hardest part was fitting all of this into five minutes. Uh, <laughs> Other than that, I think it could also be considered as combining all these components into one device and making it applicable for so many multiple environments. Uh, great job on your presentation. I, I have a question about your low flow water turbine. You mentioned that you tested in six gallons per minute, is that right? Yes. So how would you implement it? Where would you see this being potentially implemented? Like what water sources have this flow and like, can you elaborate on that? I did a case study on the Mississippi and Arkansas River in the US, which both, ha both have a variety of flows and peak sun hours. I also talked about Puerto Rico, in which we could stop the energy crisis there. 95% of Puerto Rico is expected to have energy by December, which is a long time. And some of my fellow finalists have also felt the effects of energy, and the loss of energy, I, should, I should say, because of the effects of the hurricanes. My device could be implemented to help stop these occurrences from happening. Great answer, great project, but I'd like to push back on that question a little bit and just ask what, for instance, in the Arkansas River, how much of it meets your needs for placement of the LE? Where would you place it? Those types of things, more specifics about how it would be used by an individual. It could be implemented pretty much anywhere in the flowing water. It could be placed in creeks in your backyard or pretty much anywhere. The Arkansas River is one of the places that has a very strong flow. It has about 350 cubic feet per second. My device has about 0 0.24, 0 0.23 cubic feet per second at full flow. So if this was upgraded, it could easily provide ample energy. How, how are you going to secure it in a water flow? Uh, in the water flow, because I'm using a river, I would like to attach it either to land or have an anchor for this device. <laughs> Thanks again for a very energizing presentation. Um, early in your presentation, you were discussing something called a heat map where you talked about uh, kind of this uh, Y and X axis on interest versus complexity. Um, Maybe you could elaborate on that, but also uh, who provided the input for that, that particular data or that heat map? Uh, I was just researching about how I could best convey my messages to all of you. And so I thought that this would be a very visual and a very effective way of conveying my information to you. And so it was mainly just a lot of research on my part. Um, thank you for your presentation. As you deploy one of the small prototypes to Puerto Rico, tell me about your efforts to actually start to source a much larger unit. Uh, so I'm currently working with developers to create a stronger and more efficient version. I want to start deploying this as soon as possible. And with the help of manufacturers, I think that we can truly get this out into the world at a pretty fast rate. Congratulations, really well done, right? Thank you. you waited through all the rest and did <laughs> such a beautiful job at the end. Um, I want to ask you about, you have so many scientific principles at work in your device, and I'm wondering about which ones were ones that you maybe didn't have a lot of background knowledge in, and how did your mentor support you in that in helping develop your thinking about it? 
Well, my mentor, Dr. Lee, has obviously been in science for a lot longer than I have. And so he was just be a, someone who was able to give me tips and feedback on just everything about how proper insulation techniques, how to best like orient my device, how to convey my messages as well. And it's just been really awesome to work with an actual 3M scientist as well. Thank you, Dr. Lee. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so really, really good and very, uh, so cool that you're already going to help sending stuff to Puerto Rico and, and that is just fabulous. Um, I just have a question about um, where the solar comes in and because if the electricity is being generated by the turbine, why we need an additional source of electricity. Uh, this is as a backup in case because in many developing countries, they have drought season where they do not have any water or very little flowing water as well. So this is a backup source to allow them to still have energy even during these seasons. Thank you. Hang out here with me for a second, okay? Okay, sure. Can I have the other finalists come on down here for a second? You did a great job. Thank you.